People even have home groups that they establish because they don't want to be a part of a church. And then they establish these wound licking clubs. Where they lick each other's wounds because they've been hurt by this and hurt by that and hurt by this. And instead of becoming who God says you are, you go from church to church to church looking for love. But you don't find love, you find fault. Because if you don't know Him, you'll find fault with people. You're not supposed to go to church to find love. You're supposed to become love and plug in. Come on. The church isn't your problem. You are. If you've got a problem with this one and this one and this one, it's not them, it's you. Hey. You're the issue. Get free from you. Holy Spirit sets you free from you. And who the Son sets free is free. What would it be like to walk in that freedom every day of your life? I've lived it. I live it. People told me, Todd, you can't just preach that stuff. Well, you're wrong. Then they told me, Todd, you wait. We'll see where you are in 10 years. It's been 11. It's not the set me free from me, which makes me free from you. I love you. I don't need you to love me back. God doesn't need you to love him back and for him to feel secure about being loved. He doesn't say, I love you. Come on, say it. No, God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. God loved, so he gave. What if we'd become radical givers of him? What if we sought him in the secret place and he rewarded us with him in the open? What if we take him away everywhere we go? It's not complicated, just give up. We got two commandments, man. Love God with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and all of our strength. It's so amazing. My mind is positioned to know him. God's given me a brand new heart, Jeremiah 24, to know him. He's given me a new heart to know him. He actually says that everything that I was before the cross passed away. He says that all things pass away, all things become new. Rarely do I meet Christians that believe it. I hear people say it all the time, but no. Come on, man. My question is, do you know him? Do you know him? Because if you see him, if you see who he is, he changes everything. He changes everything. You know, I went up to my room because I, I needed to get quiet right after the meeting, one of these meetings, just recently. <laughs> and I went up there and I'm like, I gotta go get quiet. I'm like taking it around the room, dude, so I'm trying to get there. And then there's a housekeeper. <laughs> and I said, hey, how are you? She goes, okay. I said, I really need to pray for you. She goes, oh, really? Okay. Well, let me finish this room. And then we can pray. I go, how long do you think you have? <laughs> it's all a couple of minutes. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go in my room and change. He doesn't work. What do you do? Do you get frustrated? Ah, no, you don't get frustrated. People are not an inconvenience. People are an opportunity. It's an every, it's an every person is an opportunity. They're an opportunity to display the love of the Father, to give away the love of the Father. So I, we, we finally, we, we got, actually, she opened my room and let us in. Keys didn't work. I said, I promise I'm the man. <laughs> she said, oh, just grab some things. So I said, all right, this, 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 this. She goes, okay, you're in. She, she, <clears throat> so I came back out. I heard the door shut. She didn't knock on the door and say, please pray for me. I went outside and I said, hey. I said, I'm here to pray now. She goes, okay. <laughs> and I started to share God and she burst into tears. Why? Not because I'm somebody special, but because he's really special. And he loves me. And I'm fascinated with the opportunity to be able to bring people to a king that chose to live in me. He chose me. You know, regardless of what my mom and dad thought when they had me. Because honestly, my mom and dad, they weren't thinking of me. My dad was thinking, my mom looked good. <laughs> That's how it happened. <laughs> Let me describe it to you. You will love this. My dad came home from Vietnam. And then my mom and him got together. My dad, he drank a little. My mom looked good. So my mom and dad got together. And then one night, 80 million chances of me were 
swim it up your <laughs> Oh no, get with me here. Pitch me. <laughs> 80 million chances of swimming in a perfect world. And 79,999,999 other chances with jackhammers and saws, ah, trying to get in the egg, just trying to get in somehow. <laughs> Tools, everything, sledgehammers. <laughs> They're all up there, trying to get in, smoking guns, man. Bent jackhammers, they can't get in. Then all of a sudden, I, I'm the last one. <laughs> Taking my time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, uh, right in the end. Right in. No tool, no nothing. Nothing! I'm inside! There's a lot of chances. Plus or minus a million, because my count might be off. But still, from inside the egg, everybody out there is complaining. From inside the egg, you hear a voice, it's my voice. Sorry, guys! I was predestined before the foundation of the world! Hey! by your parents didn't matter. What if being born again means to be refathered? What if it means to have the best dad ever and all that junk you grew up with and all those excuses that you have for finally not being free could be finally free. All that junk, all the lies from yesterday. I'm really sorry that your parents didn't want you. God did or you wouldn't be here. There is no mistakes in God. Jesus is outrageous. He loves us. He's a good, good dad. Religion hates this. Yay. <laughs> My father loves it. You know, I've, I've been in love with God. I believe, I just believe, I, I believe the truth. It's just a simple truth. He loves me. He's got a daisy. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. And it never ends. Ever. So it's impossible for you to talk me out of it. Actually, it's impossible for you to reject me. You know why? Because you're not the one that accepted me. How can you take away when you never dated me? Sorry, this thing ain't for sale. Nothing can buy it. Nobody can take it away. I didn't come here to receive honor from you. I came here to stoke your fire, to put a pair of Holy Ghost manipulators on your heart. Boom! So that we can finally just go. Like, you know what I grew up in the church? Run! Yeah, you were stealing them. Just run! Wake up! It's time for you to shine. Christ is in you. It's the hope of glory. It's the mystery. Then revealed, it's a cat. It's out of a bag. It's gone. There is no secret. It's him. It's him. And he's for everybody. He loves you, and you would see it. He would possess your heart. You would rock the world with Jesus. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Why don't we just step on his neck? What are we so afraid of? <laughs> Jesus is outrageous. This lady, she's in the hallway. She's now burst into tears. I said, God loves you, honey. And then he starts to show me that she once was a Christian and she walked away. I said, why did you walk away? Because time's hard. All God's asking you to give up is something you were never created to be in the first place. Because you were never created for you. You were created for you. And you can see the purpose, the value that you have. The value is everything. The devil's worthless, so he loves to whisper what he is into your ear. He loves to make you think that if you do this and do that, or maybe if you get a pulpit, maybe that would make you valuable. Boy, that would be sin. To need a pulpit to be valuable, oh, then you'd tell people what they want to hear. Then you'd live to be stroked by people. Boy, that would be sad. It's not about being pet by people. It's about being in love with your father and saying things that nobody wants to hear. And living the life nobody's ever seen. 
Because when you live your life that way, you entice people's appetites and they see the light. That's it. That's it. And then when they say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I talk about you, you say, stop it. Get it off. All I am is a son. I'm not an orphan. God wants a family. So he made me. Oh, he has a picture of me in his wallet. Woo! Gabriel, did you see him? Did you see Tom? He did? Yes, Lord, they showed me three times. And look again, because he believes me. Hey! That's not arrogance, that's not that's darkness. God has a picture of you in his wallet, too. He loves me, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me. How could you take this away from me? Come on! It's crazy! Dude! When you squeeze an apple, what kind of juice comes out? Apple juice. When you squeeze an orange, what kind of juice comes out? Orange juice. We're in Florida. What kind of juice comes out? Florida juice. If you squeezed an apple into a cup and it was orange juice, what would you think? Um. Really weird? Why isn't it equally as strange that every time a Christian gets squeezed, everything but Jesus comes out? What's in you is coming out when the squeeze is on? What if the devil took a risk every time he squeezed you? What if every time he touched you, he get Jesus on it? Guarantee. Let's get him. Ah! It is fun. It's amazing. So this girl gave her life back to Jesus. Jesus. Healed her nightmare. She was taking a sleep. Oh, that's the It's just good. It's 